Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2024 Developer Summit. We're super excited to have you here today. Welcome to the localization panel. My name is Christian Locke. I'm on the partner engineering team here at Roku. Some of you may have worked with me before. Um, I'm excited to present this with you today. So the, for the agenda for today for localization, we'll be discussing opportunity in international regions, how you can get started with that, um, some small tools that you might want to integrate with expanding into international regions as well, such as search and continue watching. And then finally, the Roku payments platform, which we'll discuss afterwards. Um, we will have a Q&A at the end of this presentation. So um, I'll give you guys a QR code to scan and you can submit your questions from there. So here's the QR code. Um, you guys can take a scan of this, uh, take a, uh, submit your questions from there, and then we'll we'll answer all questions after the presentation. So first off, opportunity in international regions. So why go international? So as many of you already know that the US market is already quite saturated for OTP streaming. Um, expanding into an international region will give you multiple opportunities for growth as international markets are not as saturated and still quite new to streaming. Um, beyond the US, Roku is actually live in 19 different international uh, channel stores. Um, from there, we make it as easy as possible for you to expand to those channel stores with a lot of self-service tools within the developer portal. Alongside this, Roku engineers are very well versed in expanding into international regions. If you need the support, um, we're always here to help. So feel free to reach out to us if you need help expanding and we can we can get that process streamlined as soon as possible. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the developer portal, we've had some huge improvements to it in the recent year uh, to make this in expansion as self-service as possible. You'll see that there's a lot easier ways to get your products and your localizations and other assets onto these international uh, channels should you decide to expand there. So first, getting started. What you'll need to initially start this is a channel package. Uh, you can either use an existing one that you already have, or you can start a completely new channel to expand into an international region from there. Um, once you do that, you'll need a privacy policy URL. Uh, this will be the external link that a user takes to view your privacy policy URL um, off of the Roku device. Um, and then from there, you'll need localized assets. Uh, so the localized assets are things such as artwork that you may want to include inside your apps or even descriptions for these localized regions. It does draw a more um, localized user base if you do have uh, localized artwork and descriptions, it's a little bit easier for users to, to read and understand what they're looking for. Some other things that you may want to add to your international channels are localized products. Um, these can, these will be handled for you from the Roku payments process and also, um, targeted towards international user base. Uh, one thing that you can do with localized products is you can actually, um, have target specific products to that international user base um, to run specific promotions within those regions. So it makes it a lot easier to draw growth for your channel. Um, another thing that you may need is content ratings for search. Um, this is not a requirement, but search does have an expansion into these international regions and we've made it a lot easier with the search 2.0 spec, um, including the unified feed from there. Um, from there, you'll be able to centralize all your regions into a singular search feed, and we'll dive into that a little bit deeper. Um, and then lastly, our ratings for search. Um, there's a lot a, of requirements um, for international regions for metadata. Ratings are just one of them. Um, you'll have to follow the local uh, video policies, such as the German FSK ratings, should you expand into Germany. So first off, creating your channel. If you don't have an existing channel uh, already, you can create a channel. You can do this either from the public or beta channel sections of your developer dashboard. From here, we recommend that you use the beta channel section. That's just the standardized process to starting a new channel. Um, from there, you would just click the create channel nav at the top right of this uh, picture on the left here. And then you would get this pop-up for creating a new beta channel, or if it was on the public side, it would be create a new public channel. From there, you can add your channel name as well as the countries that you would like to localize or expand your channel into. And then the default language as well as any other uh, additional language that uh, languages that you would like to add to it. If you have an existing channel that you would like to expand already, I know a lot of you partners are already um, established in the US channel market. 
and just want to expand your channels into an international region, uh, you can actually add to an existing channel by just going into its targeted settings. Um, first, you would go into listing setup. Um, and within the listing setup page, you would just add the channel regions that you would want to add. Um, you can, from there, it's very easy. Once you get out of it, you go into the store assets section here to add your localized assets. Um, some of these localized, localized assets would be things such as which languages you want to add or um, even descriptions for your channel. Um, in these international regions, should you decide to do a localized description, um, as well as any additional metadata on this page. Next, we'll go into some of the optional things that you can do for localization, the first being search. So why expand into search? Um, so search actually adds a lot of visibility to channels. Uh, it gives a direct way for users to deep link from the Roku home screen into your specific content. Um, Instead of just going directly into app and having to navigate towards content, your content will actually surface in search. And say, for example, in this, if someone wanted to watch Home Alone, they would have direct access to your channel just from searching Home Alone here. We also have Roku search zones. Um, should you decide to have a wide variety of content across your channel, um, users can actually go into different zones such as action movies and thrillers and, and find your content from there as well. Lastly, we'll talk about the Roku Payments platform. So Roku Payments has actually gotten a lot easier this year. We've um, added a multiple, we've added a multitude of ways to expand internationally with um, very easy access to Roku Payments platform. So the first would be product localization, which is the most specific thing that you'll want to do in um, for expanding into international regions. Um, it's very easy. All you need to do is add your products. Um, the channel handles um, filtering based off of your customer channel store code. Uh, you can select the languages of your products as well as the titles for them. You would probably want to localize them into those specific names for that region. Um, and then as far as currency goes, um, Roku handles all the uh, conversions for price tier, as well as the tax payouts. So um, that's very easy, ease of access and streamlined for you. And then your method of payment will be available based off of the specific customer region in those channel stores. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, here is the QR code. If you would like to submit your questions, we will answer all questions after I close this slide. All right. Thank you so much, Christian. That was a great panel on localization. Um, so taking a look at the, the Slido, we've got uh, one question. So guys, please take advantage of the time that we have um, to ask Christian your questions. Um, so we've got two so far, Christian. Um, I'm not sure if this... I. This question is appropriate for this uh, panel, but I recently implemented continue watching in Roku. Why is the app always going from prod production version of the app when we select movie from the continue watching rail? How to make Roku navigate to the developer version of the app for testing purposes? Um, so I, I don't know if we've gone over the continue watching panel yet, but um, essentially uh, in your test build, you can actually spoof your uh, your beta channel ID during your testing points uh, to have it deep link into your your uh, your continue watching app for that. Um, from there, it should it should be fine. Okay. Localization testing can be a real time sink. Any automation tools on the horizon to speed things up? Or you could talk about you can, can maybe review also what we do already have available to help speed things up. Sure, definitely. Um, I think I think um, for the most part, localization is heavily based off of how deep you want to get into it. Um, to essentially making sure that you the your app's user experience is best for the audience you want to target it to. So it it really depends on how deep you want to go into language localization or even like localizing specific app assets with everything. Um, my recommendation is. Uh, to use a lot of the tools that we already have, such as um, 
um, like our, our our developer dashboard to to implement a lot of these products. Roku already has uh, the the currency conversions and everything um, to handle that for you. So you can you can add new Roku Pay products on your end to start off there. Um, language localizations can be tackled at one point at a time uh, further down the road as well. Um, but those are those are things that we we are continuously working on to to try to make it as easy and as streamlined as possible for for developers. Excellent. Next question. Right to left languages. Anything in the pipeline to make that possible? Um, it's not something that we have right now um, available, uh, but that is something that has been asked quite a bit. Uh, we don't have any further comments on that right now. Um, let's see. Adaptive layouts for different languages. Any thoughts on making this easier to handle in scene graph? <clears throat> Um, it is something that uh, we do know is um, could be something that could be improved upon, um, but we don't have anything in the works right now. Ever thought about a built-in translation preview tool so we can see how our UI looks without changing the device language? Um, that's definitely a great idea. We we don't have that available right now, but that's that's a great idea that we that's great feedback for us. So Yeah, Samuel, you can put that one in the developer Slack. That one um has some definitely has some merit. And so it's a great feature request. Uh it's from Sam. Voice search and localization might might now be the right place for this. We do support some uh, some localized voice search. Um, voice search is not available in all regions in, in yet, but we are we are expanding voice search more. Um, I think this is going to be a reoccurring theme with uh, some of these questions. Not sure if this is really something you can answer, but any plans to add additional territories with different languages? Um, Roku is always expanding, so it's it's not my call. But and I, I I don't I'm not necessarily on the teams that plan that. But I can guarantee you that Roku is always always targeting for 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 the new great things. So um, I would just you know be patient, um, the, wait for for new things to come out. But Roku is always looking looking ahead to see where it can go. Also, you can put in whatever um, territories, countries you're looking for and the language support you're looking for, put that in the developer Slack. And we definitely have a place for that for a future request. So whatever you're looking for, just let us know. Mm -hmm. And we can add the consideration. For assets, is there a utility like the locale folder that would let us expand beyond just the five built-in languages? Uh, is this as such as in the Roku Pay assets? Or... I, I... Yeah, Jamie, you can respond back in the slide if you could expand on that question and we could maybe answer that. Uh, from Stevie, anything to help us manage multiple audio tracks and subtitles more easily? I'm guessing that's what sub means, subtitles. Um, we currently have um, our... our what we have in our developer documentation to handle different types of audio tracks. You can switch over and everything we do. Um, that is something that is, I, I don't know exactly how further you would want to manage in a specific sense, uh, what you're exactly looking for. Um, we're definitely open to improving, uh, as at least on the, the engineering teams, we're definitely open to improving partner requests um, or anything that anyone that would want to submit uh, feedback to us, we are always open to adding um, additional, uh, I guess, just tooling and everything for developers to make your lives easier. So um, if there's specific things that you're looking for um, to make your audio tracks easier to handle or specific functionality that you want, um, just let us know. And that's something that we can entertain to our internal engineering teams as well. Okay. Oops. Um... Seasonal content localization like holidays that differ by region. Any cool ideas for managing managing that in our channels? Seasonal, sorry, do you mind repeating the question? Seasonal content localization like holidays that differ by region. Any cool ideas for managing that in our channels? 
Um, I think you totally could do that. Um, it's totally up to your, I guess that would be realistically up to how you want to build your app around that. Um, you can totally customize uh, your own, I guess, functionality and exper user experience of your app, uh, depending on localization and holiday timing and everything. Um, at least for Roku side, I think we do have some holiday themes that come around on, on like home screen and stuff like that. Um, but that's uh, that. There, there'll be more to come as the holidays come through. Any plans for updates to the built-in uh, translate functionality to use dynamic API-driven translation files rather than the prepackaged ZIF? Um, nothing that I know of at the moment, unfortunately. All right, this one I'm going to answer. How about localization for ad? Any plans to help us serve up region-specific ads? Tony, come back, answer that question, ask that question in our ads panel later this morning. Okay. All right. It would be great to have the ability to search for content by language. Is there any possibility of adding this option to the search feature? That is a um what's so go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. So that is that is something that um has been brought up in the past before. Um right now you may notice that we have the standard alphanumeric keyboard and Roku home screen search. Um one one thing that does I, I do want to I guess explain the nitty gritty details as far as search goes. If you switch your Roku um, system over to a localized language, um, if that region's alphabet does offer those uh, alphanumeric characters, you actually can search in a localized language in that sense. Um, it may not have the accents and everything that other languages may have. Um, as far as uh, that goes, you can you can use that. Um, that standard alphabet to search in a localized language like that. Um, but uh, there's also voice search in some regions that you may also be able to use to search in a localized language um, for the regions that we do offer voice search uh, in. Um, so that's that's also an option. But um, there's that's that's something that we do get consistent feedback for and we, we um, look into as well. But that's currently what we offer. Okay. All right, guys, we've got a few more minutes, so... Get your last questions in. Um, content ratings vary by country and can be a pain to manage. Thoughts? Yeah, that is that is true, and I I hear you there definitely. But uh, unfortunately, it is a it is a legal requirement a lot of the time when you expand into to international territories. It's just um, you know, if you you play the game, you have to play by the rules. So um, that just ends up being that way. But it is it is annoying. We hear you there, but um. Unfortunately, you do have to add that into your your metadata feeds. Yep. Okay. Um, well, that concludes our localization panel. Thank you, Christian. Um, we are going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back in four minutes with uh, roughly. Sorry, we'll come back around uh, ten fifteen with our community tools panel. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in a few minutes.